How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's PGA Preview. It is the Valero Texas Open. I am your host, TK Nation 47, joined by John Cool 19. John, how are you doing this evening? How did last week treat you? You know, it was good. It was super exciting watching the match play up until the final, which was kind of a stinker. But uh, I really love that format for the most part until it, it goes sour at the very end. But that was awesome. Uh, didn't win any money there. Um, lost quite a bit there on the match play, but won it all right back on Kralis. Um, So really the stats kind of holding up on those second tier events. Love to see that. Uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, what about you? Uh, Corrales basically saved me from what was probably the worst performance I've had in DFS golf in a long time. Match play, <laughs> not my format. Going to note that going into next year that uh, reduce that bankroll down to a, as minimum as you can get it uh, for that match play event. Uh, sure. I did watch I did watch some of it. It was okay to watch. Um, yeah, it's just not my thing. I like when I'm getting multiple multiple shots from multiple guys and multiple interests. And I, it's just too slow and too drawn out for me, but uh, sure. we'll move it on. We'll move it on here. Um, uh, if you have not had a chance, uh, I would like everyone to get a, get into the uh, preview video that John posted uh, yesterday for the Valero Texas open. Uh, that was vital for our research. A lot of good things in that um, for the course breakdown, some preview picks, some things like that, that he does every week. Uh, like and comment on that video. Uh, John, anything to add on to that from the preview video about the course uh, here in San Antonio, Texas? Uh, I think I got it for the most part, really. The only thing is that uh, I mentioned that weather can certainly play tricks here, can change the scoring from really what was a, a, an ultimate low last year at 20 under to somewhere closer to 10 or 12 under. And that's just the wind. Um, looking at it right now, the weekend looks great. So I'm guessing scoring overall probably be 15 under or better, something like that. Uh, but what I see is looks like a storm that really kind of gets going before the week starts could lead to some very clear wave stacking. As of right now, I would be stacking big time on guys that go out in the afternoon on Thursday, Friday morning golfers. Um, but that obviously could change here in the next 48 hours or so. But looking at it, this looks like one of those weeks where we could get a pretty clear advantage. Definitely a big showdown week for me when that's usually where I play a bit lighter, um, but I kind of wait for these opportunities and it looks like it could be with one this week. So um, in the discord is where we'll post everything going forward as far as what we see on the wind and how much we want to wave stack, if any, and which wave if it changes. Perfectly said, sir. And if you want to get to the discord chat, uh, you could find that on our Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS. Their link is in the bio. Uh, click on that and you get, to, you get to talk to us at any point in time, questions, uh, you name it. We'll be there for, and available for everyone to uh, get the most optimal approach for these showdown slates. Uh, sounds like we got a good one on hand and I'm looking forward to it. It is, so. it, is, it is Monday. Weather can always change and it could always change for the worse or the better. So uh, glad to be on top of it now. Um, heading into the week. It is one week before the Masters, and we are into one of the events where uh, this usually was the Houston Open in years past, but they've moved it to San Antonio um, for the Valero Texas Open. Uh, I still think if you get a stud that is playing kind of poorly, heading into a Friday and the back nine, I think the care starts to fade away because it's Masters week. But there's not that many guys in this field that are, you know, playing both weeks. I mean, there are some, you know, like Finau and Spieth and, you know, like that. But uh, just sure. to note and make a mental note that if your guy is already uh, qualified for the Masters and he's playing next week, just be careful with your exposures. Um, and, you know, if he does play bad and he's playing bad on Friday, he could just fully eject and go home and and that's it. I'm going I'm going to get ready for the Masters. I'm not going to mess with the Valero Texas Open. That is very possible. Agreed. Yep. Yeah, very possible. Just wanted to get that disclaimer out. DJ's already withdrawn as well. I uh, wanted to be on top of that. So no DJ this week. He is the highest price golfer. Uh, he is already withdrawn. Okay, moving into some picks. Uh, we're going to start out with, I got two favorites this week. Uh, really hard for me to decide between the two. So I said, I'm going to go with both. Abraham answer at 9,700. He's a great ball striker. He was 22nd at the players. He had 4.2 on his approach at the players, 6.6 .6 around the green at the concessions, which was a really tough Florida course. He finished eighth, the 18th in that WGC. His ball striking is really heating up. He's 25th tee to green. 
fifth in par fours from 450, 400 to 450, 14th in greens gained. Uh, he's three for three and made cut, made cuts here. Uh, no, no, like surprisingly great finishes here from Abraham Answer, but that could always change. He's probably one of the more talented guys in the field. He's playing really well at the moment. He was two and zero heading into the final match of the group stage, and I think he lost it and then lost in a playoff to advance in, deeper into the tournament. So uh, he is playing well. My next guy is Ryan Palmer at ninety four hundred. Uh, he's 17 T to green first and par fives, which is very key here. Very vital to score in those par fives. There's not that many birdie opportunities and you have to be able to score on the par fives. Eagles better uh, going to be a big part of uh, those par fives. Uh, he's 20th in putting. He's really playing really well around the greens. Um, 17th at the players. And he was, he gained two strokes on the approach, 7.5 total. And he has four top 15s here and six of nine made cuts. So I really like Ryan Palmer, that veteran savvy player. He uh, took John Rahm to the wire before Rahm beat him and uh, knocked him out of the match play. So both guys coming in with good form. I like them to advance and play really well. Advance. I'm still thinking match play. I like them both to play well and then uh, rock it up the leaderboard. What about you on these two and who are your favorite plays this week? Yeah, I like both of these. I think uh, Ryan Palmer is a really good pick for me. Um, I'll be on him pretty good this week and then have some answer as well. Uh, for me, I didn't uh, – I, I went all the way to the top then. Tony Finau for me, yeah. 1,100 on DraftKings. He's 11 to 1. I know the odds uh, kind of shifted here once DJ withdrew. Um, but I, I really like Tony Finau's game. He's a guy I pick quite often. Uh, did get burned recently by the missed cut, but really he's one of the most consistent golfers on tour. Um, he's made 12 straight cuts before that missed cut at the players. And of those 12, six were top tens. Uh, so really, really consistent near the top of the leaderboard. He's played Valero three times, made all three cuts, and then was third back in 2017. So the course history is pretty good as well. And then last 36 rounds, he's 16th around the greens, which I'm finding to be really important this week. Seventh on approach, 15th in par five scoring, uh, sixth ball striking. He's up near the top in basically every stat category. I'm going to play a ton of Tony Finau this week. Um, even though I would not bet him outright, I can't pick him as my one and done because I already picked dude doesn't usually win. We that's the, always the knock on him. It's not this part of his game or that part of his game. It's that he doesn't close on Sundays. So he doesn't win. But when it comes to DraftKings 1100 for the top golfer in the field, if uh, he gets top five, top eight, something like that, he'll pay off his price just fine. So I'll take Tony Finau uh, at the top of my lineup quite a bit this week. Uh, how do you feel about Tony? I like Tony this week. It's going to be a total Finau move to win when he's at 11 K, you know, <laughs> like it's going to be so hard to fit him in your lineups without having to play some uncomfortable guys in the seven K six K sure. range. But this is exactly when he's going to strike on that win when he's, priced really high up and he's like one of the only studs i I, lo- I love the guy i i don't think he's going to be one of the guys that tapers off on a friday because i think if he's playing in contention he wants to win because he's voiding True. of that win so he's gonna always have that extra motivation to win a golf tournament love the pick uh but let's get into what the value plays because we're going to need some guys to pick um to figure out how we're going to fit tony finau uh, who do you got here as your favorite value plays? Yeah, uh, shout out to, to Tringale. I'll be playing him quite a bit this week. I didn't fit him into the slides, but love me some uh, Cameron Tringale. Uh, for value plays this week, I dropped down just a little bit here for my first. Chris Kirk, he is in great, great form right now. 8600 I think, is an awesome price. 45 to one. Uh, he's number four overall in my stat model, so the 8600 really jumped out for me. Uh, five of his last seven events, he's top 25, and he was eighth place at this course back in 2018. So the course history kind of checks there. And then the stats just jump off. Like I said, last 36 rounds, he's second around the greens, top 30 on approach and ball striking, par fives as well. And then uh, we kind of were focusing on that 400 to 450 range. There are about six uh holes that are of that length this week he is number one from that range on those par fours so i really like chris kirk this week i'll be playing probably way too much of him Um, but if not uh drop down a bit here i love sam Ryder as well 7400 100 to one probably my in my opinion my favorite outright bet down in this range 
That's a great um, bet. I think he's really underpriced on DK. I th- think he should be higher priced. Uh, and he is minimum price over on Yahoo. I'll be playing, again, way too much Sam Ryder over there this week. But he was second at the uh, Corrales. He was eighth at the Honda. Both really he just kind of stood out to me on the stats at both of those courses. Um, three top tens already here in 2021. Not many gol- golfers out there can say that. Even the best of the best. There's not a lot of guys with three top tens. Uh, and then course history too. He's two of two made cuts here. Um, 36th and 42nd. His weakness is around the greens, unlike Chris Kirk, uh, but he's top 30 approach. He's number five greens in regulation and top 10 in proximity. So I think there's a lot to like with Sam Ryder. And he's a guy that <clears throat> I'm not focusing on it a ton, uh, but he is uh, up there at the very best with windy conditions. He gains like almost a stroke and a half on the field when the winds kick up like crazy. So um, he's always a guy to target, but maybe in those first two days of showdown, um, especially like a showdown late where you have to pick golfers that are all playing in bad weather. He's a guy you will, he'll be in my lineup probably guarantee right now. So I like Sam Ryder quite a bit. Uh, anything uh, on these two guys for you? All I really want to think of is how cool it would be for Chris Kirk to get his PGA tour card at Sony, win the Valero and get an invitation to the masters. I think that would be an awesome story. So I'm pulling for him. I hope that uh, follows through. I did not know he finished eighth in 2018. That's really good. Uh, Going to be in, in more on Chris Kirk and uh, already had plans on playing Sam Ryder. That Sunday finish was pretty good. He almost stole a show and uh, pulled away yeah. with a uh, at least getting to a playoff, but um, good good for Joel Dahman. That's a really cool story too. I, I was really happy. I was really happy to see that. He's a really cool guy to follow on Twitter as well. Uh, but for my value, I'm going to go here with John Hu at 7400. Uh, he's sixth in par fours from 400 to 450. He does play pretty well tee to green. He does not. Uh, he has been a little rough around the edges or off the tee. But uh, with the weather conditions being in in our favor this weekend, I think I'm feeling more comfortable with John Hu at 19th in the Honda, 7th tee to green, uh, strokes gained tee to green. Uh, he was 22nd in 2017 and second in 2012. I know those were, uh, you know, tournaments from a while back, but I still feel pretty confident in John Hu. I've seen some flashes from him this year. That make me feel like he is uh, going to be a golfer that pops. Uh, 71, probably not the best uh, price tag for betting. I think I would rather bet Sam Ryder with the extra 30 points on that. Uh, I think that yeah. that's the much better bet. I think John Hood does have the capabilities of winning, but I also think Sam does too. Uh, so I like both picks. Uh, both going to be really good options for us. How do you think about John Hood? And uh, we can move on to our sleepers in the meantime. Yeah, I think the he's flashed that really good form this year. I think early on too in the kind of in that swing season, uh, playing really well. So I'll be on uh, Mr. Hu as well. But uh, yeah, let's jump into some sleepers here. Uh, who's your favorite sleeper? I'm going to go with Kevin Chapel, uh, 2017 Valero champion. Uh, hopefully, we get a Renaissance 2017 leaderboard. That'll really help my that'll really help my lineups this week. Uh, 13th at the 2020 Honda. Uh, he is coming back from injury, uh, so you know always be cautious of Kevin Chapel's WD. Uh, he is one of the most notorious for pulling out of t- golf tournaments before lock, so you know always keep an eye on that. But I think that's what drives his ownership down, and I'm going to feel pretty comfortable uh, playing him in my lineups. He did gain 1.1 on the approach at the Honda, 3.5 tee to green, and 8.4 total. He played pretty well in all facets of his game. He's playing. Um, you know, you know, he's playing well. So I'm going to go with Chapel as a sleeper, uh, 140 to one. If you got a uh, first round leader odds, uh, you know, they're going to be pretty deep. I like Chapel as a first round leader. Uh, who is your sleeper? And is this a guy? Do, do we sleep on this guy or is this gets our guy? <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me just make one correction. I, I goofed in this slide. He, uh, Kevin Chapel was 13th at the 2021 Honda, not a year ago, oh, yeah. but just a handful of weeks ago. So you, you, <laughs> you told me it right. I wrote it on the slide wrong, but yeah, just a recent good there finish there for Kevin. I, I like that a lot, but for me, Matthew Neesmith, um, 7,100, 100 to one, 100 to one odds outright to win. 
Um, he this seems like a homer pick because I probably had him maybe three times, four times already in the past few months um, in either my value or sleeper. But again, this week, really, the stats just make it too tough to fade him. You and I chatted about him uh, a bit earlier that maybe he isn't the guy to outright win, but he has great DraftKings scoring. He's pretty consistent, makes cuts. I like a lot there. He's absolutely excellent on approach third in this field over the last 36 rounds. He's also 10th on the par five scoring, fifth ball striking, sixth green ins in regulation. He gets it done in most of those facets. The putting isn't awesome, um, but really he's about average in this field, which is fine. Um, but then I looked at, uh, you know, some of the comp courses. He was 20th at the Genesis, which I looked at quite a bit. He also had another good finish waste management. He was top 10. Um, so really the upside may not be there for Naismith, but he is a fantastic uh, golfer on DraftKings. Lots of made cuts, lots of DraftKings scoring. Uh, so I like Matthew Naismith again this week. That's probably no shocker to anyone. <laughs> no, we, like we uh, like you said, we were talking about it uh, before. The DraftKings scoring is what we're looking for. So I, I love the pick. Going to have yep. quite a bit of Naismith. Uh, but uh, we could talk some Fantasy Golf National Club. Uh, one and Duns. Um, I don't think we have – well, we haven't – we haven't – we got to hit a winner. Uh, this is just getting a – pretty bad now it's coming. <laughs> we're we're hovering like right around the same you know area and i'm just burning too good of golfers to be not moving so like i need something something to happen i'm gonna go with ryan palmer um for the reasons i i said at the top uh, i'm hoping this is the one he comes away with the big three uh, i do like your pick as well talk a little bit about your guy yeah, Tringali, really, it, the stats back it up. The form backs it up. Um, he's got decent course history as well, so really checks all of the boxes there. Um, I, I probably would have taken Finau here if I had him still available, but that's just fine. I think Tringali is a great option, especially if you're in, like, outright betting. Look at a top five or a top ten on Tringali. you probably get decent numbers. Um, I like him a lot this week. So hopefully uh, one of our guys makes his way to the top and we can uh, jam up this leaderboard. Amen to that, man. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening in. Uh, please like and comment below. Um, it has always been a blast. We have the Masters coming up, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, ha we'll have, uh, you know, core projections out and our model rankings uh, tomorrow or possibly Wednesday. Uh, like John had alluded to, we'll get to some weather. Uh, all the information you need uh, throughout the week, you can find us in the Discord. And that was on uh, the link was in the bio for the Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS. John, anything else to add for the Valero Texas Open? Nope. Let's get it one last week before uh, build the bankroll for the Masters. That's right. I'm trying to win a uh, hundred dollar uh, Melly, Melly Maker ticket this week, <laughs> so I got my my lobby already set for it. But hopefully we can we can strike that and get into the contest that way. So uh, thank you all. For, yeah, thank you all for listening and. Uh, See you later. All right. Peace.